For example, the wingers come in right back, almost like full backs. You find the options, they can be in a one versus one. Encouraging the opposition to press needs to be some space that you can use as bait in order to gain some momentum advantage. Only jockeying and standing off. Welcome back to Chasing My Potential, where I help you discover those knowledge gaps massively holding you back. Whether it be the small technical details or decision making, we cover it all, leaving no stone unturned. What happened to wingers? This is a question I'm seeing fly around all of social media. You may have seen the memes where it says wingers back then. versus wingers now. People seem to be crying out for some flair to be injected back into the game. Let's face it, we didn't fall in love with football, sorry you Americans, when we were younger because of how well your team pressed or how defensively solid they were as a unit. We fell in love with football due to the excitement of the individual brilliance. Maybe a screamer. Maybe a ridiculous pass. Or maybe a last stitch tackle if you were a defender or an unbelievable save if you're a keeper but the pinnacle of excitement we all felt was flary wingers how many people do you know if say ronaldinho is the reason why they started to watch football and you can add one more to that list too because i'm one of them If you're around my age, 26 or a little bit older, this analysis will help you understand why the game you grew up playing is completely different whether you play it or watch it, especially if you're a winger. If you're a little bit younger, this analysis will massively improve your football IQ. Understanding how the game goes through different phases and evolves. To be at the top of your game, spotting this evolution earlier than others is key. Because like Perlo says, the game is played with your mind, the feet are just your tools. To fully understand why we don't see this player in modern football anymore, let's take a look at the key differences in today's game versus the past, and what key elements of the game altered, affecting the flary wingers' impact. First, let's look at the enemy of flair. In order for a player to use flair in the first place, they need space and a lot of time isolated in 1v1 situations. But in today's game, this is the defensive picture we see week in, week out. A low block with all players back. Although this helps out defensively and makes it harder to score a goal due to less space, it can also make it harder for that team to then create goal scoring opportunities as when they win the ball back, they are sitting on their own box with no forwards to even play to. If a forward does get the ball, he's usually isolated or surrounded by multiple opponents. And to have the optimal opportunity for flair, receiving the ball against a compact low block where the defender has cover to his left and right with hardly any space to work in is far from it. Resulting in a limited amount of options. Wingers having to roll the ball out of their feet and either force a cross into a compact box. or lay the ball back out to go out the other side. And what a common picture this is in today's game. This picture is the enemy of flair. In order to be successful in a dribble, you need to have some leverage in the first place. There needs to be some space that you can use as bait in order to gain some momentum advantage on the defender. Once you achieve this, now you're in charge. For example, here with Ben Arthur, one the streets will never forget. We see him taking the ball this way to an isolated defender in a 1v1 with plenty of space to use as bait. Once he has the defender moving this way, he then touches the ball the opposite way against his momentum, threatening a potential cross. He then fakes to cross the ball. As the defender dives in, he puts it through his legs. And then as a down on the other defender. And again here, he has so much space down the line to use as bait with a retreating defender again with not too much support. He runs down the line initially taking the defender into the bait space, cuts back against his momentum, 
waits for the defender to re-engage and scoops the ball back down the line and fires across the keeper. But if you have no space to threaten and you're just boxed in, the defenders just jockey and wait for you to make a mistake. And as well as not having space to leverage in a 1v1, being against a defender who is only jockeying and standing off means you can't take them on in the first place. Remember, we need a defender to engage. And a defender who is jockeying engages once they feel out of control. Usually when you've gained a good angle of approach, then some momentum advantage now forcing the defender to play catch up. But let's compare these defensive structures to the good old days. Football tactics are constantly evolving. Successful tactics don't stay the same for long, as with each new decade, new managers think outside the box to nullify the tactics of the previous era that dominated, hoping to become the new wave of tactical superiority. When we look at the era of the flair player, from 1990 to roughly 2012, the defensive responsibilities required from attackers was a lot less. Here we see the free attackers have the luxury of staying up opposed to today where the whole team is back. Of course, the pro to this is the defending team winning the ball back and having options up front. And we find the options, they can be in a one versus one. Also leaving players up stops the attacking team bringing more men forward. The downside is easier overloads for the opposition, creating more 1v1 and 2v1 opportunities to easily get in and around the box. Managers prioritised attacking play and freedom to the players over defensive duties from their attackers. Wingers and forwards were put in the team to create and score goals, leaving the defending to everyone else. With the wingers having more freedom to stay higher up the pitch, this meant a lot of the time when the ball turned over play, the amount of space for the attackers was larger than today. Because attackers weren't thinking, am I in a good position to recover if we lose the ball? They were more focused on the attack at hand and didn't worry about when the ball turned over play as much. Meaning one of the most game-defined situations in this era was transitions. Transitions meaning when the ball changes over hands from one team to another. As soon as this happens, we would see players higher up the pitch out of the game. For example, just look at the space out wide here. It was a much more exciting game to watch. A bit like basketball in the sense that the ball was up this side of the pitch and then back down here and constantly going back and forth. So far, we have the perfect ingredients for a flair player. The player can stay up and when his team wins the ball back, there'll be more space at the top of the pitch because the opposition attackers aren't tracking back as much. Now this is an interesting era to watch because we slowly begin to see more and more teams becoming more defensive, requiring more defensive responsibilities from the forwards. This became popular especially after Mourinho's dominance with Porto back in 2003, being one of the first managers to prioritise defensive structure with every player involved opposed to a more free role for the attackers, similar to what we see today. The more these tactics are used, and of course we would see managers doing it back then, it just wasn't as common or structured. The more defensive teams would become, the deeper the flair player would come to receive the ball. Here JJ Okocha, receiving the ball deep against a compact Manchester United. He beats the first player, but Beckham is close enough to tackle him, as Okocha didn't have much space to work with. Opposed to when he does the exact same skill with plenty of room out wide. Here we see Ronaldinho receiving the ball behind the full team. Here we see the opposition winger defending from the front, which is normal behaviour from today's wingers. But the flair still helps him deal with these situations. He threatens a fake pass to the overlapping fullback with the winger going to block. Now, as the defender re-engages, he hooks the ball away from pressure, also enticing the defender here, before chopping the ball back against his momentum. Although he beats the player, the only option he has is a simple layoff, with the whole team sat back behind. 
and that's another reason why flair has died out in today's compact game when the opposition lose the ball in today's game they rush back as fast as possible into a compact defensive shape for example the wingers coming right back almost like fullbacks and the whole of the midfield covering any possible space on the edge of the box so the window of opportunities players have to take advantage of the space once they win the ball back is so short. Flair often takes a long time, slowly enticing the defender to take a bite before destroying them. And by the time this happens, yes, he had beat the player and it was entertaining, but the opposition has recovered. Whereas nothing moves faster than the ball to quickly take advantage of that space before the opposition recover. And this is how many games work today. Coming up against a compact defence, bringing the ball all the way back out, encouraging the opposition to press, and now beating the press, playing through them fast, so you get an opportunity to attack with a little bit more space. Still, because the teams get back so fast, there's not a lot of opportunities for dribbles. Now, wingers are more complete players, having to be more intelligent, recognising players' runs, and small passing lanes opening up. As the game became more defensive, new dribblers began to emerge. Eden Hazard flourishing in the transitional game, driving with the ball at lightning speeds, attracting multiple players to him before shooting or passing. No fancy skills are used here. There's no time for that. Opposed to when the opposition used to lose the ball and would take much longer to recover. Attackers could use this vital time to slowly entice a defender into committing before beating them creatively. And I don't want to give the point across that these opportunities never happen, because they do. The only difference is, less often. Due to how fast teams recover, mostly down to the tactical emphasis on a solid defensive structure, and also not to mention, sports science becoming a big thing in football around this era too, players becoming faster, stronger, better stamina, so they can all recover quicker as well. Players today aren't less skillful. They just have to think a little bit faster and also don't have as many 1v1 opportunities as before, especially with the time and space that they have. But when they do, we have the likes of Vinicius, Neymar, and Mbappe, all showing that flair. These players also have the other side of it too. They can spot a pass, they know the right times to dribble and play fast. Players have to be able to do it all now. So to answer the question, where did all the flair players go? They didn't go anywhere. The opportunity for a dribble just changed. Where a one versus one used to be a common sight with lots of space and time on the ball, not anymore due to lack of room and the defensive structures of teams, giving them a defensive numerical advantage a lot of the times. Today, we see more compact dribbles. Dribbles that happen in tight situations, oftentimes with multiple defenders around. And when we think about dribbling or train dribbling, we only really think about the one versus one. But dribbling is compact scenarios. Driving scenarios. Two V1s. And one V1s. One reason we see flair dying out today is because players are growing up only practicing drills that relate to a one versus one and skills that relate to a one versus one. Of course, they still happen, especially on counter-attacks and still on transitions, 
but the football world hasn't mapped out dribbling as a whole. Something you need to know about dribbling. Certain skills specifically work in certain situations and scenarios and are completely ineffective in others. But for a long time, we won't see as much flair as we used to. Instead, we will see more sharp, effective skills that waste no time. Now, because the winger who is judged solely off his 1v1 ability and creativity can't get into these positions enough anymore due to how teams set up defensively, coming inside more and linking up the play, resulting in the winger being a way more complete footballer. So the winger has now evolved. Some wingers that come to mind that don't threaten anyone in a 1v1 dominate today's football in every other way. And idolising these old school tricky wingers can be a lot of up and coming players down for. I can relate to this firsthand. When I joined Blackburn Rovers Academy when I was 12, from then on and all the years after, my only task as a winger was get the ball, get at your man, get the ball in the box. So all I used to practice on was dribbling and crossing. And this was the same for 90% of the Premier League teams in the country as well. And all I wanted to do was dribbling because that's what brought me the excitement of the game in the first place. Fast forward to age 21 when I'm now playing in League One in England and the game's evolved. My team doesn't cross the ball and dribbling is a rare occasion as we need to move the ball fast. And on paper, it says I'm playing winger, but truthfully, it feels like I'm playing a completely different position. Oftentimes forcing a dribble when it wasn't really on and I wish back then I seen this exact video to understand the game has evolved and old school wingers don't work anymore. You need to be a more complete player. A winger can't just rely on dribbling and crossing anymore. Being aware of the evolution of the game, understanding how it's changing can help you stay ahead of the curve, identifying what new opportunities it will create on the pitch for you and which ones it takes away, helping you train more effective for the new evolved game. In my opinion, we have so many skillful players at the moment and more emerging, but they're just slightly different, more compact dribbles and more driving dribbles opposed to just the 1v1. To be a footballer today, you need to be more complete than ever and more intelligent than ever. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe. If you want to take your game to the next level, check out all my courses that I've had years of study in the process. Reflect on your game and ask yourself, are you ahead of the curve with the way the game is evolving? Or do you need to alter your playing style a little bit? And most of all, keep chasing your potential.